Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the seventh video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we covered replace, split, to lower, and we introduced regex. In today's session, we'll learn the extract function and we'll learn how to decode base 64. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In today's session, we'll learn extract, substring, and how to decode base 64 encoding. In the previous lesson, we learned regex basics, and we learned how to find patterns where no numbers exist in records. Let's start by expanding that concept while using the same regex statement. On the kc7cyber.com site, let's go to the free data set of Castle and Sand using Azure Data Explorer. Let's start with the process table that shows processes run on hosts in the network of the fictitious company. For this example, let's work with only unique host names. We can see that some host names have numbers and letters, but some have no numbers. In this example, we want to sanitize the first four letters, but only on host names that have no numbers. We can reuse our regex statement from the last session to help solve this problem. As we extend a new field called sanitized home name, we can use an IIF function. This function requires three arguments. The first defines the if portion of the statement. If something is found, the second portion defines what to do if the first statement is true. The third portion defines what to do if the condition is false. This is commonly referred to as else. So in this case, if there are no numbers present in the host name, we want it to be sanitized by adding four X's to the output. But if there's at least one number present, we don't need it sanitized. So just display the normal output. For our first if argument, we can define the field and use matches regex while reusing the regex statement from the last session that finds patterns with no numbers. The second then argument uses the string concatenation function to join two items together. We'll place four X's, then use the substring function, which is new to us. Substring is used to extract a portion of the string, and we can use two arguments, the field in which we want to perform the function and the index value in which to start the substring, which in this case is position four. The last argument of host name represents the else statement. If the initial condition is not met and there are numbers in the string, then just project the normal host name field output. In this example, we have an overarching IIF function. And inside of that function, we have a strcat function. And inside of that, we have a substring function. You can stack multiple functions in this way using KQL. Just keep track of the parentheses for each function so you know when you place the next argument and it's clear which function you're working with. When we run this query, we can see that for host names without any numbers, the first four characters are sanitized with four X's. And for host names with numbers, they're displayed. When we use the substring function, only two arguments are required. The source, which is host name in this case, and the starting index, which is four in this case. The third optional argument defines the requested number of characters in the substring. So if you consistently only needed three characters after the index, you could define it in a third argument like this. This is an example of using conditional branches in our queries to support if, then, and else statements, which can be very powerful in writing advanced queries with precise outputs based on conditions in our dataset. 
The last function that we'll cover in the string parsing series is extract. This function is used to extract data from strings using regular expressions. Let's start off with an example using extract to help understand a potential use case. Let's go to the process events table and focus on distinct process command line records. In this example, we're concerned that a threat actor may be encoding commands using PowerShell. So let's start by building a query that finds all PowerShell Base64 encoding on devices. When we run this query, we can see that one unique PowerShell Base64 encoded string is found in the environment. In this case, we want to extract the actual Base64 string into its own field. We can first extend a new field and use the extract function. Since we're using regex here, we need to place the first dash and include all possible encoding aliases in PowerShell to find, then extract everything after the encoding. After the comma, we see the number two. This represents the capture group we're interested in extracting. In this case, the first capture group would be one of the encoding aliases. And the second capture group would be everything after that. So we select two for the second group. Lastly, we identify the field to execute this in. When we run this query, we can see the extracted base 64 is now in its own field. But there's one problem. There's a quote at the end, which is not part of the base 64. So let's remove that with a trim end function. Now that it's cleaned up, we have the base64 string isolated. If we wanted to decode the base64 string to identify what is being executed, KQL has a base64 decode to string function to help us out. When we run this final query, we can see the decoded string and better understand what is being executed. In this case, the command uses PowerShell to call a WMI method to install software updates on a machine. While this is likely benign in nature, it may be something to look further into. That's all for today's session on extract, substring, and base64 decoding. In the next session, we'll learn how to work with IPs in KQL. For homework, use any free module at the kc7cyber.com. Use the process events table and look at the process command line field. Find any base64 encoded commands, decode them, and list distinct commands. Depending on which free module you select, there may be variances, and you may have to trim, replace, or otherwise manipulate the string using the skills learned in the previous four sessions. Post your solution queries in the comments section, along with the name of the module that you're using, to learn with and help others. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button and if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.